All right, here's a regular dining table that we installed stone coat countertop epoxy on, and we did it in a copper metallic. This came out just beautiful. You're seeing here the reflection of the light. That's how reflective our surface is. We, uh, we just took that normal plywood and we put a nice edge on the whole thing and, uh, and we just did copper in this top and it just really came out really beautiful. I love the way this looks. So this is just one color and two flood coats. We did a base of copper and then we did copper metallic right into our uh, top and this is what we came out with. This is a really beautiful dining table. You can make conference tables. You can make all kinds of different surfaces using stone coat countertop epoxy and it's very easy to do. In this video we're going to show you everything we did to this table and how we got it to look just amazing. I'm going to show you if we could see this copper in there and just how beautiful that comes out. And that was just such an easy technique that we did just with a brush chopping that in. So stay tuned and visit StoneCoatCountertops.com. Okay, this is the table that we're starting with. This is just a, a plywood table and it's got uh, plywood edges here and it's just been painted black and we're going to uh, turn this into a copper stone coat countertop table and I'll show you how we do that. Uh, this particular job the customer wants us to cut three inches off the perimeter of this table so we'll do that and then we're going to apply a drop edge so that it appears to be an inch and a half thick but we'll just put the uh, edge around the perimeter and that will give you your thickness where you don't have to actually double up all the material. So we're going to do that now and uh, we'll show you the process. Okay, Enjoy. we're going to go ahead and cut three inches off of this side. We cut three inches off the other side. We're going to do this side because they wanted their table just a little bit more narrow for room for their chairs. So that's what we're doing now. We have this guide. It's our straight edge guide. We just made it out of sheet of plywood. We put a straight edge on it and then we run our saw right on there and that, that gives us a nice straight factory edge so we're not cutting this by hand. So that's what we're doing here. So what we're doing now is we cut off three inches off each side of this table and now I'm putting a drop edge just like our if, if we were building this out of MDF how we put a drop edge and that's to make it look thicker in the front and around the perimeter and what I, I just used the wood that we cut off and I ripped it down uh, to little strips here and I'll glue it and nail it. Uh, pin nail, I use 23 gauge pin nails and we'll just attach a drop edge. Now the difference between using MDF and plywood, this is a plywood substrate, is you can see that the plywood has got ply here and so we're going to have to take and put a coat of Bondo on the face of this. You can even use a drywall spackle or spackle and just fill that in so that it's nice and smooth because you don't want like, uh, you don't want um, plywood ridges showing through the stone coat countertop epoxy. So now I'm just going to make sure this is nice and flush. We're going to go through here and just squeeze it and shoot it. We did the whole perimeter. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put a round over uh, bit we have here on our router and we're going to follow the perimeter of this table just to make it look more like a piece of furniture and not just a square piece of plywood up here. And that will also help the stone coat countertop epoxy flow over the edge to create a real nice even look. We're going to do this before we bondo. So I'm going to go ahead and do the whole perimeter now. Okay, so we did the perimeter in our round over on the top. Now I'm also going to do that perimeter on the bottom. So it has a round over at the top and a round over here at the bottom as well. And that takes the stone coat countertop material and it runs it back underneath so that this front edge stays real flat. So that's what the purpose of this is going to be all the way around the perimeter. Alright, what we're going to do now is we're going to use our uh, 
150 grit sandpaper and just sand the roughness of this plywood edge off before we apply our Bondo to seal it. So I'll just take and doesn't take long by hand. Just go through and that makes it just a lot smoother. And you don't want it too smooth. You want to have something for that Bondo to attach to. But this is all we do here is just sand some of that roughness off. And it'll really turn out, you'll never know this was made out of plywood. Okay, we got not. the edges all sanded with that 150 grit. Now we're going to use that same piece of paper. And we're just going to dull the surface of this, of this uh, table. We've already cleaned it down. And now we're just going to dull it and get some scratches in it and create something for our uh, base color to bond to. And so that's what we're doing now. Uh, we're going to scratch it up. And then any bondo that comes up over the edge will also have something to bond to. So... You want to make sure you sand your surfaces before you apply any stone coat countertop material to them. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to actually bondo the face of our table here. And we're also going to bondo where they had seen this table together just to float those joints so that you can't see those seams when we're done with this table. Um, what I use is an all-purpose putty. Uh, I get this at Home Depot and I'm just going to mix it on a piece of cardboard here. Just using a shim to scoop it out with. Now this stuff sets up pretty good. This is, uh, this is nice and warm in this home here. You want to pour between 65 and 75 degrees is, is really good temperature. Um, the the uh, hardener, you just kind of move it around in the tube first. We'll put a little bit of hardener on there. And then I'm just going to use the Bondo spatula to mix it around. And you want to really mix this well so that the hardener gets in every part of the Bondo or else it won't dry. And this dries really fast. It you know, usually takes about 20 minutes before you can sand, maybe even a little less depending on how warm it is. It's nice and warm in here so it won't take long. And I like to do it on a piece of cardboard so that I can bring the cardboard with me as I'm moving around the table and really uh, just work quickly. And all I'm, all I'm trying to do here is I don't want to um, change the profile. I'm just going to put a thin coat on to fill any of the micro voids of that plywood. So that's what the purpose of this is. Um, if, you, if you don't want to work fast, you don't like the smell of Bondo, you can use uh, drywall spackle to do this step. Uh, it just takes longer to dry. Okay. So I'm just going to apply just a little bit. And another thing that I like to do too is use my hand on a lot of stuff. Your hand is a good tool. So I'll get it on with the spatula, but I'll come through here with my hand and just really smooth it out. So I'm just putting a nice thin, thin coat on. You don't need much at all. Now that I got that, I'll just do one full swipe there. And then I'll come here with my hand and I'll just work that profile. And I'm just kind of using my thumb and the bottom of my hand just to work that profile so that it's nice and not a lot of sanding for me. And then you can even take your hand over this whole thing one time and just push it on in. And it trowels it out really smooth. All right, so our Bondo on this edge is all dry. So I just use that same 150 grit. And you're just going to go through and sand that Bondo. And it will make that edge really, really smooth. And, and, and that's what you want to get right before you put your base Okay, we got on. everything sanded down with the 150 grit. We got our edges all Bondoed and sanded. And now what we're going to do is we're going to apply our copper base color. We're actually going to... Uh, a lot of times I'll use a paint and primer in one from Home Depot, but in this case they want a copper look. And so our copper base is really fancy and so that's what we're going to use on this particular job. Um, so this is, uh, this is how I apply it. I'll just pour a little bit out there and then I'll roll this around in a nice thin coat here. And, and the purpose of rolling this out, because I'm also going to put our copper metallic into our uh, our actual stone coat countertop epoxy and so the purpose of rolling this out is that anything thin uh, or if the copper isn't hiding everything this will uh, this will hide it and so 
it will appear that everything is just made out of a sheet of copper. And we're not going to do any um, accents or anything in this. We're just going to do copper. That's what our customer wants on this particular job. And so that's what we're going to do. And you can see that that bondoed edge now, you can't tell that was plywood. It just really, really hides, hides that. And so it's, it's really neat what you can do with just a simple piece of plywood or MDF and what you can turn it into. Now this particular base color dries really, really fast. So you got to kind of work with it um, kind of quickly and uh, get it laid out. So I'm going to go ahead and do this entire table in this base color. And I'm going to need a couple of these, probably, probably uh, two or three of these base colors for this particular table. And this base color is really neat because it will, uh, you can actually pour it directly into the stone coat countertop epoxy to tint it. And so, you know, you can, you can actually do an opaque tint where it's not even translucent and, and make a solid color look. Like if you wanted black or silver or gray or whatever colors that we have, that's what our base color does. We don't actually paint the substrate too often with our base color unless unless it's something like this where we're trying to get copper all the way through or something like that. Okay, we have our table is dry. It's ready for our coat of uh, our first coat of stone coat countertop epoxy. We do. Uh, uh, we we got our metallic powder. It's copper. We got that in mixed in our material. We put our material, our epoxy, near the heat source, right near the heat vent, and let it warm up real nice. So it's going to be real liquid and really easy to pour. But uh, you can watch how this pours out. It's just really amazing. Um, and this will this wants to self level, but the notch trowel will help us spread it out. So here we go. Now what we do again is we'll scoop everything out. We use the notch trowel and then we chop everything. All right, here we go. We got a lot of material out. We'll start to spread it out. And I'm going to go right up to the edge, but I don't want it to go over the edge just yet. I'm going to leave enough to do the edges, but I don't want it flowing over the edge yet. I'll come back and do that. So you can see the bead that I'm putting right near the edge. And I just leave it right on that edge, and I'll continue on. And actually, spreading it is really fast, but doing the, getting it right to the edge, that's the only you know, tricky part about spreading the material, which... That's not very tricky. And I'm not pushing hard with the notch trowel at all. I'm just using it as a measuring device to make sure I don't go too thin or too thick with the material. Now you can see all the rake marks that this trowel is leaving and that's perfectly normal. Those are going to go away. I'm going to chop it and then it'll continue to self level the material will and uh, it'll level and level and level and all of our chopping and everything will, will kind of go out of this and it'll just look like a, a really neat sheet of copper sitting up here. So I'm going to trowel this out and then uh, we'll chop it and I'll show you how that works. Alright, we're going to do our second bucket here. entire surface again and just mix everything together here. You want to make sure there's a nice even coat. You don't want to drag your material off. All I'm doing is just mixing it now. I'm putting my trowel at a slight angle 
to move the mass of material towards uh, actually going away from me. If I tilted it the other way, it would come towards me. This helps mix everything and keep the color real consistent. In this case, that's what we're looking for. Most of the time, I don't want the color consistent. Okay. So our brush is already primed. We've already used it to scoop material and stuff. So I'm just going to start doing edges and uh, make sure everything's coated on those edges and then we'll chop that surface. Okay, now I'm going to start chopping this entire top here. So where you start, you tend to pull material off, so you got to make sure there's not a low point there. Just kind of move material back in there because your brush is real dry at first. So now when I chop, it'll be real even, but that's why we prime our brush so you're not pulling material off that one spot and creating a low point. I'm chopping all the way over the edges, and the reason I'm doing that is because I'll come back and hit those edges again. So now I'm just chopping to, to get rid of all of our trial marks and it creates this really cool pattern but most of this pattern will start to level back off and go away but uh, it'll create a, an ungeometric un pattern where it's just a natural look is, is what we're going for. The uh, real important part of this step is there's thousands of little bubbles in this from doing all the steps that we just did. Can you focus in like this direction here so I can show how these bubbles just pop right away? Okay, hold on one second. Let's get all the way there and let it focus. All right. You see where the, like over in this area where the chandelier is? Right here? I've got a real, yep, right kind of in front of you in there. Here? Yep, uh, oh. a little bit closer to it. Okay, so here are all these bubbles. When I torch, I just... I go pretty fast, but you're just going to watch those bubbles pop. I'll do this a few times on this whole top. I'll, I'll do it now, then I'll come back in about 10 minutes, and maybe 5 minutes after that, and then leave it alone. If you keep torching it, you can create waves in the top because you hit it towards the end of its working time and it won't want to level back. So keep that in mind when you're popping bubbles. You can see how they just immediately go away. flame draws that oxygen out of that bubble. It wants to eat that oxygen. So it just does a great job popping that bubble. Okay, here we are on the next day. Uh, our countertop has cured and dried. You can see, uh, I'll try to get the uh, I'll try to get the shot here. You can see that there's some divots in the countertop, which is pretty normal. Um, on the first coat, there's gonna be some uh, imperfections and stuff like that. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna sand this down and just do a clear coat over this whole table, um, just to make it look just really good and flat. Um, and uh, so I'm gonna sand the edges down and sand the top down with 220, and then we'll pour our clear coat. So that's what I'm gonna do now.
So, go ahead. So what we were doing is we use these little. We have pin gauge needles, and they're just tiny little needles. Twenty-three gauge. Twenty-three gauge pin needles, and we use them to be able to give us a little bit of leverage to get any of the brush pairs out, or if there's epoxy that maybe was built up on your paddle, or if there are dust in the air, it helps just be able to get that without creating too much of a divot in um, the epoxy itself. So we get that out, and you can see Mike goes back over and hits it again with the torch. And this is a really important part of getting everything to just lay out perfectly. It's also a really good way to break that surface tension without creating huge craters and other divots from your fingers or um, even like tweezers sometimes are a little bit too big, so this is a good idea. <laughs> so what we're doing now is we're just scraping the drips. We came back to this job about uh, three and a half, four hours after we poured it. It's about 70 degrees, <laughs> probably down to about 65 now, but we... All we do is just take that little uh, Bondo scraper, spatula, and just scrape those drips off. And I'm just going through one more time here just to make sure they're off. And because of the time frame, they're still gel, but they won't, this, this table won't keep dripping.